This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. In Britain, Buckingham Palace has released details of proceedings which will follow the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II on Monday. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma has details. Two minutes of silence will be observed across the UK at the end of Queen Elizabeth II's state funeral at Westminster Abbey on Monday, giving the public across the nation a chance to pay their respects to the late monarch. Then Elizabeth's coffin will be transported through the historic heart of London from Westminster Abbey to Wellington Arch near Buckingham Palace on a horse-drawn gun carriage with Charles and other royals walking behind. Charles de la Desma, London. The White House press secretary on Thursday denounced the practice by the governors of Florida and Texas of busing migrants to Washington, D.C. and other locations. She called it a cruel, premeditated political stunt. Karine Jean-Pierre accused the Florida and Texas governors of using migrants as political pawns and said their actions were, in her words, shameful, reckless, and just plain wrong. She said the fact that a conservative media outlet and not government agencies were alerted to the plan made it clear that it was a stunt. The office of the Florida governor said planes carrying migrants were sent to the wealthy resort island of Martha's Vineyard on Wednesday night. Well, the Texas governor said his state intentionally sent two buses of migrants to the home of the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington, D.C. Officials in both locations confirmed the arrivals. The actions by the governors, both fierce critics of the Biden administration, are the latest series of moves by Republican governors to transport migrants to liberal cities and states to protest what they say are inadequate federal efforts on southern border security. This is VOA News. The United Nations nuclear watchdog Board of Governors has passed a resolution demanding that Russia end its occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine. This according to diplomats who attended a closed-door meeting on Thursday in Vienna. The resolution adopted by the board of the International Atomic Energy Agency calls on Russia to immediately cease all actions against the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and other nuclear facilities in Ukraine. Diplomats said Russia and China voted against the resolution. The resolution says the military occupation of the plant significantly increases the risk of a nuclear accident that would endanger the population of Ukraine, neighboring states, and the international community. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky looked on and sang the national anthem Wednesday as he watched his country's flag rise above the recaptured city of Izum. The president made a rare foray outside the capital, Kyiv, that highlights Moscow's retreat from the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Russian forces left the war-scarred city last week as Kyiv soldiers pressed a stunning advance that reclaimed large swaths of territory in Ukraine's northeastern Kharkiv region. And EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Thursday that Ukraine would have the backing of Brussels as Russia's invasion of Ukraine nears its seventh month. She told reporters during a press conference with Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky, quote, you'll have your European friends by your side as long as it takes. The U.S. government says retail sales rose unexpectedly in August after being down in July. AP correspondent Jennifer King has more. The report from the Commerce Department shows that even as prices at grocery stores, restaurants and clothing stores rise, people are still spending. Retail sales rose 0.3 percent last month, boosted by higher prices for food, but with inflation taking a bite out of budgets, there was also some weakening in discretionary spending, including furniture stores. E-commerce sales fell 0.7 percent in August following the July boost from Amazon's Prime Day. Americans have been shifting away from consumer goods and spending more on rent and services not covered in the report, like travel movie tickets, and doctor visits. Analyst Ted Rossman with Bankrate.com says it's not clear retailers can realistically hope for much more right now. Jennifer King, Washington. U.S. President Joe Biden has praised a tentative agreement reached between major railroad and workers' unions avoiding a nationwide rail strike. The tentative agreement must still be ratified by union membership, but it headed off a strike that could have begun as early as Friday. And once again, our top story this hour, Buckingham Palace in Britain has released new details of the proceedings of the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth. Marissa Melton, VOA News. From around the world, I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan. 
This is VOA News. Via Remote, I'm Marissa Melton. A surging tide of people ranging from London retirees to former England soccer captain David Beckham have lined up to file past Queen Elizabeth II's coffin as it lies in state at Parliament. So that many that authorities on Friday had to call a temporary halt to more people joining the miles-long queue. Late afternoon, a live tracker of the queue said it had reopened, but government warned the waiting time had climbed to more than 24 hours. King Charles III and his siblings will be standing vigil around the flag-draped coffin on Friday evening. The United Nations has voted to allow Ukraine's president to give a virtual speech to the world body during the U.N. General Assembly. AP correspondent Norman Hall has more. The U.N. General Assembly voted to allow Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, to deliver a pre-recorded address to next week's gathering of world leaders. Zelensky is being given an exception to the rule, requiring leaders to speak in person because of his need to deal with the war following Russia's invasion. The 193-member world body approved Zelensky's virtual address by a vote of 101 to 7, with 19 abstentions, including China. The seven countries voting no were Belarus, Cuba, Eritrea, Nicaragua, North Korea, Russia, and Syria. I'm Norman Hall. Ukrainian authorities say they've found at least 10 torture centers in territory recaptured from Russia in the country's east. This follows the discovery of a mass grave containing about 450 bodies at a site near Izum. The Russians occupied the city and Kharkiv region until the Ukrainian counteroffensive pushed Russian troops from the region last weekend. The United Nations says it wants to send a team to investigate the site of the reported mass grave and determine the circumstances of the deaths. This is VOA News. The French news agency is reporting hundreds of Boko Haram jihadists have fled to forest enclave in northern Nigeria, escaping airstrikes by the military and floods from torrential rains to seek shelter on Niger's side of Lake Chad. Northeast Nigeria is facing a 13-year armed insurgency by jihadist groups that has killed more than 40,000 people and forced about 2 million from their homes. The violence has spilled into neighboring Niger, also into Chad and Cameroon, with the jihadists maintaining camps in the vast Lake Chad region, straddling the four countries. A Nigerian security source said Boko Haram militants have been leaving the Sambiza forest since last month because of sustained bombing of their hideouts. Nigeria has also recorded a more intensive rainy season, which usually runs from May through September. Flooding has hit almost every part of the country. Months into a water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi, questions are being raised about why people in the city have to boil their drinking water. AP's Ed Donahue has that story. How did this happen? Residents, politicians, experts, and activists say systemic racism is the root cause of Jackson's water problems. Maisie Brown is a student at Jackson State University. Nobody else has to have this fight, but nobody else is as black as us. Um, and, and, and is it the socioeconomic level that the city is at? Mayor Chakwe Lumumba says Jackson's population has declined since 1980, a decade after the city's schools began integrating. When it became a black-led city, uh, you had white flight, right? Um, and uh, with that population decline, uh, you saw, you know, revenue, you saw tax dollars leave. The mayor says Jackson has been left out of the equation in terms of equity of resources. According to the Census Bureau, its population is more than 80 percent black and the poverty level is more than 24 percent. I'm Ed Donahue. Kyrgyzstan accused Tajikistan of fresh shelling late on Friday despite a ceasefire deal reached by the two countries' presidents as a deadly border conflict forced thousands of people to evacuate. The Kyrgyz president and his Tajik counterpart agreed to order a ceasefire and troop pullback in a meeting in Uzbekistan on Friday. This according to the Kyrgyz president's office. The former Soviet republics, both of which are Russia's allies, earlier accused each other of restarting fighting in a disputed area that has left at least three dead and dozens wounded. The ceasefire was set to take effect uh, from 4 p.m. local time, according to Kyrgyz border guards, and a statement issued Friday. Tajik authorities confirmed that that agreement had been reached. And once again, our top story this hour, a tide of people ranging uh, from across the uh, financial spectrum in London are in line to pay their last respects to the Queen.
This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. The World Health Organization is raising the alarm about a second disaster in the wake of the deadly floods in Pakistan this summer as doctors and medical workers on the ground race to battle outbreaks of waterborne and other diseases. More from VOA's Tommy McNeil. The flood water started receding in the worst hit provinces, but many of the displaced now living in tents and makeshift camps face the threat of illness, including gastrointestinal infections, dengue fever, and malaria, which are on the rise. The stagnant waters have become breeding grounds for mosquitoes. WHO's Director General said in a statement Saturday that he was deeply concerned about the wave of disease and death following this catastrophe. Tommy McNeil, VOA News, Washington. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said Friday that investigators searching through a mass burial site in Ukraine have found evidence that some of the dead were tortured, including bodies with broken limbs and ropes around their necks. The site near the northeastern city of Izum, recently recaptured from Russian forces, appears to be one of the largest discovered in Ukraine. Zelensky spoke in a video he rushed out just hours after the exhumations began. He said more than 440 graves have been found at the site, but that the number of victims was not yet known. Before digging, investigators with metal detectors scanned the site for explosives and soldiers strung red and white plastic tape between the trees. Zelensky said hundreds of civilian adults and children, as well as soldiers, had been found near a cemetery after being tortured, shot, or killed by artillery shelling. Ukrainian authorities warned their investigation is just beginning and the scale of the killings could rise dramatically. This is VOA News. Thousands of people have spent London's coldest night in months, huddled in line to view the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II. Authorities warn that arriving mourners face a 16-hour wait. Honoring their patients, King Charles III and Prince William made an unannounced visit to greet the waiting crowds on Saturday. William and the Queen's seven other grandchildren later stood vigil beside her coffin at Parliament's Westminster Hall. Police arrested a man Friday night after what the force described as a disturbance there. Parliamentary authorities said someone had tried to approach the coffin on the platform where it's lying in state. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi arrived in uh, Armenia on Saturday, days after the Caucasus country's deadly border clashes with Azerbaijan jeopardized Western efforts to broker lasting peace between the arch foes. The worst clashes since Yerevan's 2020 war with Baku erupted on Tuesday, claiming the lives of 215 people before hostilities ended on Thursday after international mediation. Pelosi said her visit was meant to be a powerful symbol of the United States' firm commitment to a peaceful, prosperous, and democratic Armenia and a stable and secure Caucasus region. She's the highest-ranking U.S. official to travel to Armenia since the tiny, impoverished nation's 1991 independence from the Soviet Union. Senegalese President Macky Sall reinstated the post of prime minister Saturday, appointing a former economy minister to the job two months after a tense legislative election in which Sall's ruling coalition lost its comfortable majority. The president said in a statement that the prime minister will be Amadou Ba, a 61-year-old taxation specialist who's also served as foreign minister. Puerto Rico is under a hurricane warning as Tropical Storm Fiona approaches. AP correspondent Mike Gracia has that story. Puerto Rico is bracing for the arrival of Tropical Storm Fiona, the sixth named storm of the 2022 hurricane season. Fiona was 130 miles southeast of St. Croix Saturday morning, moving west at 8 miles per hour. The storm is on a path to pass near or over Puerto Rico Sunday night, and forecasters say it could dump up to 20 inches of rain. So far, Fiona has battered various eastern Caribbean islands, with one death reported in the French territory of Guadeloupe. Fiona is expected to swipe past the Dominican Republic on Sunday as a potential hurricane, and then Haiti and the Turks and Caicos Islands on Monday and Tuesday. I'm Mike Gracia. The beer is flowing at Munich's world-famous Oktoberfest for the first time since 2019. With three knocks of a hammer and the traditional cry, it's tapped. The city's mayor inserted the tap in the first keg at noon on Saturday to open the festivities. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. This